Regional variants have become a pretty big commodity in the Pokemon fan game and Rob hacking scene over the last few years. Even projects like Pokemon Tectonic that already rework every single Pokemon still throw a few more forms in just to spice things up. While most fan games only add about 20 to 30 new forms, there are a few that really like to push the limits. Fan games like Insurgents and Vanguard, and ROM hacks like Altered and Fool's Gold, add over 200 new variants, really offering a new experience. But what if I told you that there was a game that not only was made up of just new forms, but had 800 of them? You'd probably call me crazy, considering the idea that someone made a game with enough new forms to make up 7 full generations of Pokemon. Well. Lucky for you, I'm not crazy, because a game like that actually exists. This is Pokemon Time Wardens, a Pokemon fan game with over 800 regional variants. So, covering all of the regional variants in this game wasn't something I was exactly able to do. Due to the sheer number of them, I probably only used about 6 to 7 percent of all of the forms throughout my playthrough. Even using them aside, there were likely at least a hundred I didn't even see or encounter. So while I am confident in my judgement, feel free to take what I say about them with a grain of salt. First of all, I'm happy to say that none of the regionals I picked up felt useless or unviable. They all got at least a handful of stab moves and decent abilities or base stat totals. But stats aren't everything. Obviously, most people probably want their battling companions to look cool as well. And thankfully, Time Wardens is no stranger to that. For a game that adds over 800 regional variants, you might expect only a couple of the designs to be really good. But no, most of them are very creative and well thought out. And sure. There definitely are some that aren't much more than recolors, but those ones are pretty easy to ignore. And come on, can you really expect all 800 regionals to be perfect? Another thing you might assume is that all of the cool and strong forms aren't obtainable early, which is also false. A good portion of my rotating team were Pokemon that I caught before I even completed the first chapter. But I don't want to sit here and spoil all of the designs for you, so let's instead talk about this game's story and region. Now, if you've been watching any of my content, you've probably seen me talk about a few games that don't use the traditional Gym and Pokemon League system. But usually, those games will instead implement another type of boss fight progression like Captains or Exams. The interesting thing about Time Wardens is that it does neither of those things, and progression is simply based around progressing the story. But there are two things about the story that I feel like I have to mention. First, you might find yourself having a hard time taking the story seriously in the first two chapters. A lot of the dialogue is quirky and kind of strange considering the setting. Second of all, the early story has a lot of big and confusing lore points kind of thrown at you. Luckily, these issues don't stick around for long, so I hope that by at least saying this, you as a player don't drop the game or give up on the story upon encountering these. But what about the region? Exploration is as important, if not more, in some cases, as story. In Pokemon Time Wardens, you'll travel through the very diverse Orion region. But calling a region diverse doesn't carry a lot of weight anymore, so let me try and emphasize exactly what I mean. In just the first 2 out of 13 chapters, you'll visit a lake, a forest, a beachside town, a snowy village, and route, a mining excavation area, and a handful of different caves in between them all. And it doesn't stop there. Every area won't just feel different in the path you take, but also the surrounding. It felt very alive and I had a fun time progressing through it. There is, however, one more important thing I want to mention about the story, or I guess the game as a whole. Technically, Time Wardens is a sequel to a game called Pokemon Soulstone. However, the lead developer has stated multiple times that a playthrough of the original game isn't required to enjoy this one. And as someone who didn't play said first game, 
I didn't have any problems with missing plot points from it. So yes, I will confirm that you do not have to play the prequel to fully enjoy this game. Aside from what I already talked about, this game comes with a lot of features to make the experience a lot more exciting and enjoyable. The first one, I'll warn, might make some of you click off and lose interest immediately. Pokemon Time Wardens introduces three new types, Light, Cosmic, and Sound. I'll admit, I do not usually enjoy new types in fan games. At most, I'll be tolerable with one, and that's about it. But I was genuinely surprised with how well this game incorporates them all. They don't feel niche or out of place and fit right into the other 18 types that you're used to. Of course, it did take a bit of getting used to, but I eventually got the hang of it and I think you will too. Other than that, Time Wardens comes with my favorite set of features in any fan game, quality of life. EVs can be edited in the Pokemon stat menu. Move tutors are now all in one place, your phone. The second floor of any Pokemon Center has a place to grind levels if you fall behind. But that shouldn't be something that happens very often thanks to this game's unique EXP system. Basically, every time you defeat a Pokemon, the EXP will be increased or decreased by one third for every level they are below or above you. This means that if you somehow fall behind in levels, battling just a few trainers should get you back up. And finally, probably one of my favorite features, at the start of the game, you receive an item that heals your party a bit every time you take a few steps. This was a nice alternative to stocking up on healing items or running back to the Pokemon Center when you needed it. But that's about all I have left to say, I do hope I've at least convinced you to give this game a try, but if you enjoyed the video itself, then I also hope you consider subscribing. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye!